So with the pins in their new locations, you can kind of see why now, because we need this raker gauge, this pin gauge on the side here, it needs to clear. We can't have that saw sitting so deep that it, it bumps into the, to the vise. So you can see here that it'll clear all the way around. And now you can kind of see why the shape, the vise has the shape that it does. It follows that, that uh, contour there of the saw. I'm just checking and we got we can easily get all the way so having this this is kind of a bit of an atypical saw it's a little bit small and we can see there that uh, that's a little bit wiggly in there we don't want that so there's a quick and easy fix for this too so because the saw is sitting up here so high and it's not down there where these oak strips can bite it really good uh, the solution is just make some small some little tiny wedges right there out of whatever you have just some scrap and I'll I'll just uh, poke those in there and every other strip or so wherever I can get them and that will give me that takes all that wiggle out of there and now I have a nice secure saw I don't want it chattering we're going to be filing on it and swaging on it and and really uh, uh, really uh, putting a lot of uh, force on it so it's got to be it's got to be held there securely. So the next tool that we need to set are these little guys and these are called spiders. They kind of look like a, like a spider. And they'll come in all different shapes and sizes. These are all different, very old. They're probably all well over 100 years old, uh, but they essentially do the same thing. You need several of them because you'll have them set for different depths. And what these, what these essentially do is they are a gauge for you to, to determine your set and what they have is they've got three legs that are these are all the same and this one here will be a little bit shorter so that when you sit sit them you lean them back on the short one you get that rocking effect and that gap in between is what determines your set so we'll have uh, the the widest one I'm going to have it will be set at 12,000 and then maybe we'll do one at 10 and one at 8 and then we'll mark them so depending on the saw and what we're trying to do and, and how much of a crescent grind is in it many different things will determine the set but we'll just do this one here for 12,000 so I'll just check them I can feel here that one's pretty pretty big that was bigger this one's very subtle that's got a very small distance so we'll save that for for the eight thousands okay this one here so with our feeler gauge here we again we've got what we got here these are kind of hard to read we've got uh, 16 thousandths this one's 12 thousandths so 12 thousandths and I'm using the back of my timber framing chisel here you want something that's that's absolutely flat and we can see with the 12 thousand we still have some gap 16 thousand still have gap even at 20,000. So this is, this is way open way too much. We've got to take these down. So we'll take these down on a little stone. So this here is just your regular, just your traditional type of a uh, filing stone or coarse fine stone. You probably all have one here in your place. And so what we'll do, we, we don't want to bother the long part, but we want to work that back and forth a little bit. A little goes a long way with this. You can see there that we're we're polishing those three bottom feet. We're going to take that down just a little bit. And so uh, there's no you don't want to get in any hurry here. We'll just keep checking and make sure that we're using our twelve thousandths feeler gauge. Let's put the other ones away. Okay, we're getting closer there. Now I'm not, I'm not doing the back so much, I'm trying to keep that up, but the two on the side, the two feet on the side there. I had all three on there for a little bit just to knock off some of that rust and just to flatten it out a bit, but I'm getting very close.
Okay, now we're really close. We can see, and with our 12 thousandths, it's a little bit tight. I went a little bit too far, and that's all right. So we can just, just put a little bit of pressure on the leading edge, on the long edge there, tiny bit. We want that feeler gauge just to fit in there, just, just nice and just snug. One more. Just like that. Now we know that is absolutely 12 thousands. You can take our Sharpie. And the best thing to do is, you know, you have one that's kind of dedicated for each, each measurement and to take a, you know, something a little bit more permanent like a scratcher or something, but I'm just going to put on here that this is point, that's 12 thousandths right there. And that's the one, and then I'll, I'll just, I'll know that. So this next one here, we'll do the same process, but we'll set it at 8 thousandths.